Hi, welcome everyone. I'm just going to jump straight into the proxy training on how to use this new solution. Um, energy levels are a little bit low. Some of you may or may not know I've just had a baby girl. So um, funnily enough, she's sleeping, but the other kids are waking me up right now. So um, let me just jump straight in. And um, again, apology for the lack of energy. So here you have a new tab that some of you have been messing with, I see from the uh, comments in the group, not quite sure how to work it out. And I also couldn't work it out. So this is the video. Proxy, open admin panel, this is what you get. And the first place you want to go is not touch any of this stuff. This is goes, this here is the um, is your home screen for the proxy. So these are all the different areas you can have proxies in. If you click all of these, it will show you what's already currently set up, what's running, what's not running, and so on and so forth. So right now I've got these three set up. And this is a server, right? So I'm, 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 I'm actually going to just delete this. And I'm going to show you that when you delete them, it just stays there deleted for a little while. They don't get deleted immediately. Um, it takes, I don't know, it takes um, a, few, a few hours until the whole thing runs through um, the, the actual deletion from the system here, right? So it goes through, it's shutting down, terminated, but that will still... It'll still appear as terminated, I think, or as something for the next couple of hours, even when you do close and open it back up. So um, this, again, is is your home screen. And when you click on that, it'll show you exactly what, what, what IPs you have available. So as long as it's set up, you're getting charged. I think it's like 0 0.000 half a quarter of a quarter of a penny um, when it's just set up and you're not using anything. Uh, in all, it works out a lot cheaper than... Than, than private proxies, really good private proxies. Um, but still should still should you should still all be aware of all the different charges that Amazon are going to be uh, making. So please do go through their terms and find that out for yourself. Um, the buttons that we have here, this is gonna start your servers. This will stop your servers. This will delete them. This will allow you to edit the groups, right? So right now, um, these are all of the different groups that I've got, the different IP rules here, for example. So. Um, the IP rules is basically you would set your IP there in order for it to um, um, validate so that you can authenticate and use the IP wherever it is you want to you know, use it. And you can have, um, I think, an unlimited amount of IPs. Or there's probably set. It's probably up to 10 or 20, but more than I'm sure you need to use. Elastic IP means that you're going to be allocating an IP that's going to stay with you the whole time. So if you want an elastic IP, you click on that, and this IP, for example, and this IP, for example, um, is available, and it will be said it will stay with me the whole time if I decide to use them. But I actually want to release these. I don't need them, so that's gone. Apparently, I was paying for that. So please make sure to go through all of your settings and know what you're paying for, because Sometimes um, there are going to be little charges. That's how Amazon make their money, right? Everything's like little mini micro charges. Um, and then redo proxy charge um, server over here is sometimes it'll come up red. And then you just need to do redo proxy server. So if it comes up red here, meaning uh, it's not functioning, it either means that you don't have the IP, um, which you can do in here. You don't have the IP, um, um, the IP, uh, in the system so that it's going to be able to authenticate your um, you so that you don't have to use username and um, passwords. Okay, and the uh, IAM keys, AWS, these are the keys that you find in your, your secret keys. And then you can export your IPs and just use them in other programs over here. Okay, so let's just jump straight in and actually start making some, pro some, some servers and, and create them. So we, the first thing you wanna do is new and open up this, window maximize it because there's more going on over there you just don't see it okay so this apparently this one here east virginia is the most expensive one it's only available on the medium that's at 0 0.067 cents an hour and here are the options that you have here the nano and the micro we always go with the nano because that's like 0 0.01 cents an hour uh, it's negligible really um but don't leave them on because if you do leave them on it's going to cost you a few dollars a month all right, so make sure you're on top of things and that you're managing everything. Okay, so I don't need all of them. I don't want all of them. I just want a an IP in, let's say, Oregon and in Frankfurt. I just want one in each. That's it. So I've set this one. This is the plan that I want. And 
I have my IP already set here. I think it's changed. Let me just um, get that IP again. I don't know because I have a dynamic IP here. And that's, again, perfect exactly how this works. It's a dynamic IP. My IP changes all the time, but it's from the same provider. So that's like totally normal. Dynamic, whoops. <laughs> what my IP. Okay, so yeah, my IP has changed again. So you want to come back in here. New permission. Put your IP in over there. Put your IP in over here. Oops, for some reason it's not picking that up. What's going on here? There you go. All right. And you just come down here and click OK. And it's going to set them up for you. So OK. And it's going to tell you what it's doing over here on the top right. Total regions, creating two, created one, and then it's going to go through its processes, uh, starting the servers, and it just basically takes you through the entire, explains to you what it's doing along the way, opening a, opening up a uh, server instance, it's installing the software, um, SSH proxy server installation on all created instances, so, you know, it's telling you exactly what it's doing the whole time. And all of this you would normally need to do manually with inside Amazon each time, so... Um, it, it's really not possible to be used like that efficiently or in any way. I mean, no one will be able to use it just the way it's used like that, which is why they have an API. So we've integrated and um, and and you don't have to do any of that technical nonsense. So you just have to come into the app here and just go out and follow these instructions that I've just given you and it'll create these servers for you and um, the IPs will always be um, dedicated to you at the time. So they do get shared because they're dynamic IPs, but they're only dedicated to you when they're getting, when when you're using them. Um, so they're all very, very clean IPs. It could take a few minutes for, the, for it to go through this, and this is the longest process. It takes probably about one to two minutes per instance to set up. Could take a little bit longer than that. So I know this video is already going on a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause it while it finishes this process and come back to you when it's done. Okay, so it's it's done its thing, it's done its main work. As you can see, it does this sort of um, going over and over again for this, uh, I don't know what it's doing, instance is booting, waiting 10 seconds, right? So the servers are booting up for the first time there. And as you can see, it started, here's the IP, one's been issued, connected, connecting, connected, opening live shell stream, installing proxy server scripts, install complete editing config, rebooting proxy servers now live, closing SSH tunnel, SSH tunnel closed, right? So it's telling you everything it's doing along the way. And here are the two IPs from the two different regions that it had allocated. And it's going and, it's, and it does that for each one. So you would need to do this manually on each setup um, every time you wanted to actually use one of these IPs provided by Amazon. And when it's done, it'll just stop on the side. That'll finish and this will close and um, and you're good to go and your IPs are all ready. So this is the last step over here when it goes through the rebooting, proxy servers install, and there you go. It closes down, all ready to go. Now you can close this, come back to the admin panel, and here you have your two IPs. And there. So we can close this. Um, let's just see. It's green, green, so everything's good. Right, so we're all good there. Let's close this down. We can come back now to Browsio. And the way that we use this is that you click that, go to the regions, click on the IP you want to run, then this pops up on the top right, it says next project will launch with this IP. So this is the project I'm going to open up here. And now this project is now opened up on this IP address. And now it over and, and, it, and it overrides any of the current proxy settings temporarily. Um, while you are logged in or while you're um, while you, you have this current um, instance live so as long as this project here is open um, and this is open here you're going to be running with this IP and each project you open will will be with this IP so if you close that down that means each project now the next project you open will open up with the advocated IP but this one will continue with the current IP and if you close it back down, it'll then open back up with the original IP. Um, so the reason I've done that is because these are super, super fast IPs. And 
we're going to be doing something with YouTube soon. Uh, look out for that. And these are great for uploading. So they're super fast proxies and they allow you to upload really, really fast. So a video that would normally take an hour and a half to upload on a really like a normal average IP. I mean, a really good IP, which says they're fast, but it's about an hour, an hour and a half. It takes about 10, 20 minutes with these Amazon IPs. So um, you can really upload large items just like you would normally upload on your own um, fast IPs at home with these Amazon IPs. So you can use them for many different reasons, either either just logging in and using it for for just you know your usual SEO social media marketing um, or or using your current IPs and then just using them to upload large files and so on and so forth. So it's really entirely up to you. I mean, I'm just letting you know that's one of the ways I've seen it really works well for me and saves loads of time because when you're uploading videos via, um, via these slow IPs, it could take a long time, right? So, um, so okay, so that's it. So there's one last thing I want to show you um, on how this, on, on what um, the other settings are here. So we have, last thing here is the Elastic IP Manager. So let's go to that and we have IPs here and here. So I want to allocate one new one. So I'll allocate new. Nothing there. Allocate new. So here's that new IP. And then assign to VPS. The terminated instance, that's now terminated. The one in Oregon. And this new one has now taken its place and this one is going to now be the permanent one so even when i even when i stop it even when i stop it it's still going to work it's still going to i'm going to be able to come back to that later and uh, continue to use it um so that will act as my own ip for the month and then i can change it or keep it for months and months and months and that's going to cost two 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 three dollars a month for that particular IP, something along those lines. But that's again, for those of you that need to have the same IPs and want the same IPs, you, you can do that. But really and truly, it's not needed. These are dynamic IPs and all it's showing you, the other um, sites generally is that you haven't restarted your router. So I don't think there is massive, massive need for it and you shouldn't be getting carried away and worrying about any of these things that you're not using the same IP over and over again, unless you have specific local marketing needs, that's another story. So um, I hope that helped. I hope that gave you a great understanding on how to use this. I know it was a longer video than usual, and I like to keep them shorter, um, but I wanted to get this out, and um, hopefully this all makes sense. And I'm sure I'll hear from you guys in the group if, if, if there are any um, questions, queries on how and where um, anything is getting stuck for you, okay? Um, again, always the best place to start is definitely not the group, but in support, because that's where the developer actually gets... Um, these questions. He's not in the group and he doesn't get any of the um, videos, any of the uh, posts in the Facebook group. Um, so if you want the developer to hear immediately, just go to support and and you got access straight to the developer and his team and they'll be able to get straight onto it. All right, guys. Um, having said that, I'll see you in the group.